Welcome to today's coffee lecture. Can you hear me all right? Uh, Yoshi, okay. So today is our first coffee lecture, which was uh, given almost or 10 years ago, the number one on stay tuned with alerts. So what are topic alerts? Topic alerts are alerts you receive when a new uh, paper in your field has been published or if a paper related to your research questions has been published or if there's a citation of a certain paper, which is probably very important to you, is getting cited, so competitors are working on it, or when new papers are published by someone, that could include also your worst enemy. Alerts when your topic gets mentioned in the web or alerts when you get mentioned in the web. I show you also an example on this and alerts when your paper gets cited. There's unfortunately no alert when your paper gets not cited because sometimes people are mad. Um, and uh, write this on Twitter that someone never mentions my work as always. So there's no an alert for that. How do they look like? So alerts look like this if you get it from Scopus. So I have an alert on research metrics or alt metrics. So there was one paper dealing with that subject. You see the query. There was another one which had more hits uh, later on. I have also one on text mining. So I get frequently an alert uh, on new papers on text mining. I have also alerts if one of my papers is cited. So this is a very old paper from 1994, which still gets cited. And I have also alerts for certain papers. Uh, so this was sort of a fake alert just to test. So this is how it looks like in Scopus, but of course you can also set up alerts in Google Scholar. So this is a Google alert. I get notified if someone cites my paper. So someone cited also a very old paper recently. Uh, you get also information if something is published. So this was actually a call for papers, which I do not consider a publication, but nevertheless, as it got a DOI, uh, it was somehow detected by Google Scholar as a new publication. And I have also a topic, which is not on Google Scholar, but on Google in general, and Google alert on coffee lectures. So if there's any coffee lecture from another university, I get notified as soon as possible. And it's always good to have also an alert on yourself because sometimes you see that in newspapers something is published about you. So this was seven, eight years ago when the German, uh, the Swiss Boulevard Journal or newspaper Blick called me. It was very hot like today. Uh, and they ask, uh, when do cars melt if it's very hot? And I said, that's ridiculous. And it's probably about 1,500 degrees Celsius. And then I figured out that was uh, covered in a newspaper quoting me the following day. So it's also good to have these kind of alerts to see what people talk about you. So you can set up alerts in different databases, which ETH has licensed like Scopus or which are partly free like Dimensions. So uh, in Scopus, the disadvantage is you have only abstract level, but I think it's the best interface and I will show this live to you. Dimension has the advantage that it has partly full text. So you get more and you will see that also in the live demo. I would not recommend Web of Science because they have only abstract level and less titles and it's a, a, a confusing system. PubMed is important for anyone in medicine, but if you set an alert, you should know what a MESH term is, medical subject heading. Embase is also a database that is licensed by ETH Zurich and it has rich metadata for life science. So it's recommended if you work in the medical or life science field, applied sciences, that's very useful. And we have also access to Cortelis Drug Discovery Intelligence, which is a, a special database for early research in pharma or where you have all kinds of po possibilities. But I also want to mention, which has no focus on science, Google, Google Scholar, which has the advantage that it includes preprints, not always, but mostly. So if you want to stay really ahead of what is going on, you need the preprints and then Google Scholar is the best resource. And of course you can have alerts, all kinds of alerts in Reaccess and SciFinder. So now I switch to a live demo of Scopus. So takes a moment. This is, um, 
the search interface uh, for Scopus. So you have the possibility to search for documents, for authors, for affiliations. I start with authors. I recently met Peter Schreiner, who used to be the president of the German GDCH, and he was interested in the coffee lectures. So I just searched for him. Uh, and the advantage of Scopus is that they have a very good disambiguation of the authors. So it's easy to find him. That's he, if I click on his name, I see his profile and then I can set an alert if I want to have get notified if some if he is publishing someone or if he gets cited. So let's stick to the document alert and, and Scopus, you have the option. You can say, I want to have it every week or every month or every day. And if you have every day, there is no choice. But if you say every day, you can every week you can decide uh, you, I want to have it on Saturday or on Sunday because I have time, or you can say, I want to have it only uh, every month on the 20s of each month. So that's, that's really nice. And you can rename the alert um, as you want to. So I set this alert now. So now I get notified if he's publishing a new paper. Um, of course, you can also search for a topic. So if something is your research topic, you do a search and save not only the search, you save it as an alert. So you got notified by email. So I do a search for coffee lecture. And you can see there is just one publication in Scopus. Um, so if I want to uh, save this, I'll do that later. I can set up an alert. Next is a more complicated query, which Andre used in yesterday's coffee lecture, plastic degrading or plastic eating microorganisms or bacteria or enzymes. So if I run a search, I get 215 results. And I'm also do, that's an advantage of Scopus. I can say, well, I want to change this a little bit because there's not only an AND operator, there's also an with in operator. I say these two terms need to be within three words. So the precession is better. Recall is most likely less. So I get more um, of these. And if I want to set an alert, I just go to the search page again. And here you can see in the search history, the search for coffee lecture. And if I want to set an alert for coffee lecture, I can just set the alert. If I want to set an alert for this query, I click set an alert. And I've set up this alert. It's easy to monitor your searches because if you go on this page, you have an overview of all alerts. So here can see there are all alerts I have. If I go for vacation, I could set them all on inactive. Uh, so they pause, but, and I can also easily delete. So I will delete this alerts, which I just prepared. So they don't fill my inbox. So you have, can have a nice list of, of alerts. So my PhD advisors, new publications, you can name it as you want. So this is my list of alerts in Scopus. Um, so that was um, the live demo on Scopus. And let's continue again with uh, other options, which I show you as a screenshot demo. This is um, dimensions. So if you log in in the dimensions, the nice thing is since Corona, you don't need a password. You just log in, enter your ETH email. You're recognized by the system as a member, or in my case, I have three roles at ETH Zurich. And then you are logged in, your name shows up uh, top right. And here I do again a coffee lecture search. And as you can see, you have many more results. I think it's, it's more than 100. And I can also set up... Uh, an alert for the coffee lecture, but I have less options here, uh, just setting up the alert. You can see 122 results. This is why, because of dimensions, having access to lots of full text, they are the first hit 
uh, there is nothing mentioned with coffee lectures. And if you try to find the word mentioned in the article, it's difficult. Finally, I decided to go to ETR, get it and get the article and download the PDF and search in the PDF. And the only thing is I could find the agenda with the coffee and probably lecture. So this was a bug somehow in dimensions. But if I look at the other things, there are lots of paper that really deal with experience from other libraries and information centers about coffee lectures. So this is a value of dimensions that you get much more results, especially in fields which are not hard hardcore science. Uh, so in this case, there's an article that's also not mentioned coffee lecture. But if I download the article, I can see from the coffee lecture zur Schreibwerkstatt in German. So there is an article. If I want to set up this as an alert, um, I click on save export, say this is my alert on coffee lecture and I can choose if I want to have only publication, grants, clinical trials, data sets, patents or policy documents and I just selected all. And uh, you can see here there are six data sets also for coffee lecture and one is for example a poster from another university on their coffee lectures. If you want to manage your alerts, you have just to click on this tab on the left. There's a tab filter, which is default. If you click on favorite, you can see this is my alert of coffee lecture. You can see when it was set up and I can delete it easily. Next is the same for Google Scholar, which is a free resource. So if I do a search on coffee lecture here, it doesn't tell me the exact number of hits. It says it's probably about 250. So that's the disadvantage of Google Scholar that the quality of results is, is not as good, but of course uh, you get the, the highest recall, you get the most hits. And you can also set everything as an alert, which is here, create alert. If you create an alert, you can rename it as you want. You can say, I want to include less relevant results and then you get more and click on create alert. If you want to follow a researcher, you have to go to the uh, personal page in, in Google Scholar. And then there's on top this blue follow. And if you click on follow, uh, you can say, well, I want to be notified if new articles are published by these authors or there are new citations or new articles related to this author's research, so, which is also interesting because you get notified if similar articles are discovered by Google Scholar. So here you have some choice. And last, I would also like to mention the Google alert, Google, not Google Scholar because sometimes they can be also really useful as you saw uh, with this uh, Swiss newspaper Blick. To set up an alert with Google uh, is easy. You have to go to Google Alerts. So there's a search help with Google. Uh, you need to have a Google account and then you can just do a query and save this query as an alert. And you see, I have a lot of alerts in, in Google for all research groups at ETH because I'm also responsible for science communication and public relations of the Department of Chemistry. So I monitor what is talked uh, in the web about these 55 professors at our department. Um, and you can also say, well, I want to have it immediately or once, once a while, or you can select a bit the sources and the languages. Uh, so there is also some choice. With that, I'm finished. If you want to get your coffee lecture card, I have some paper copies in my bag. And if you want to have it digital, just drop me an email to uh, my email, email address at ETH. This is the most shortest one, reno at ethz, uh, uh, dot ch. And I would like to advertise also in the next coffee lecture, in the next week, the last week of this 29 series, which is number 37, Manchester Academic Phrase Bank, which will be given by Yoshika Dolenz, right? Or Gina, Gina Canarosi. So Gina will cover this coffee lecture next week, same time, same place um, on Tuesday. If you have any questions, uh, you can unmute yourself or ask questions. We won't record this part or uh, we will delete this part of the recording. So don't hesitate to ask any questions. <laughs>